Okay, welcome back. So this is the second class uh, on algebra. So let's call it ALG2. And today the topic is called matrices, again. Uh, but specifically, it's about inverses, and I'll explain what that is. And uh, this is one of the fancier terms. General linear groups. Okay. Uh, so I know many of you have done homework last time, and this time is particularly important. Uh, if you did not, you might be a little bit lost. Okay. So uh, let me just start with. Uh, so last time I kind of made all of you uh, learn matrices and do homework, carefully determine it. So this time I'm going to start with uh, some applications of matrices, matrices and try to illustrate to you why it is so important. Uh, I remember last time I spoke to some of you, it's pretty much no matter what you study, uh, in the end you're going to deal with uh, matrices. So let me just start by uh, giving two examples that I can give about applications of uh, matrices. Uh, so the first example is uh, systems of equations so uh, there are two equations x plus y is equal to 1 2x minus y is equal to 5 uh, if we, let's just call the first one 1 second one is called 2 uh, who know how to solve these equations? How do you solve it? You can substitute. Or you can, uh, or you can, like, let, let's see, you can um, add them up, I think. Okay, so it's the same. Okay, yeah. so this is the method one. And I'm going to tell you... Or oh, that's the second method. Uh, but I'll talk about three okay. methods. Okay. So method one, uh, I somewhat made up this name. Okay, the first one is, let's say, algebra. Algebraic method. You sum this two up. One plus two. Okay, so you have two equations. You sum it up. Daisy, what's left hand side? If you sum this two up. Um, three x. Mm -hmm. Olivia, what's right hand side? Six. Six. Okay, I'll do the next. Uh, x is equal to two. And then you put x2 back to here, so y is equal to minus 1. Okay, so all good. So this is the first method. Uh, the second one, method 2, is kind of graphical. Uh, by this time, I've asked enough number of times, I don't want to ask again. I remember every time I do this, I ask everyone, hey, who know how to draw something on the xy plane? I'm not going to ask again because I keep asking and I keep forgetting, okay? So, um, basically this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, uh, and it is a grid, like one, two, three, one, two, three. So when x is equal to one, y is equal to one, so it's basically this point. Now this point actually satisfies this equation x plus y is equal to 1. <coughs> Another, well actually no, sorry, mistake. So what I mean is, this point, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, so x plus y is equal to 1. Another point is, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, so this also satisfies the first equation. Uh, Johannes, can you give me a third point that also satisfies the first one? Don't use straight number, okay? Some small number. Uh, okay. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, x equals to uh, mm -hmm. x equals to uh, minus zero point four. Um, y equals to. Okay, uh, I think what Johannes mean is x equal to two, y equal to minus one. <laughs> okay, I think that's what he was trying to say. So what you notice is every pairs of x and y, now this is important, every pairs that satisfy x and y is actually a straight line. <coughs> okay. 
So I want to pause for a second. I know it's really trivial for some of you, but for some of you, it might be new. So basically, every point, every pair of x and y that satisfy <coughs> this equation is on this straight line. Uh, so this is line number one. Okay. Uh, now you can do the same, 2x minus y. Um, and when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 2 and a half. x is equal to 0. Y is equal to zero, X is equal to two and a half, it satisfies this equation. So it's this point. When X is equal to, let's say three, what is Y, Olivia? One. One, so it's this one. So if you diligently keep doing it, you realize this is also a straight line. And this two straight line crosses at a point where X is equal to two, y is equal to minus 1. So this is what uh, Johannes referred to as a graphical method. So x, y is equal to 2 minus 1. So method 3 is called matrix. Let me show you what it means. Uh, so if I do this 2, 1, 2, minus 1, and I do a 2 by 1 matrix called x and y, is equal to 1, 5. Uh, there are two points I want to make. Number one is I want to show you this. It's actually the same as this. So, um, so this is 2 by 2 matrix. This is a 2 by 1 matrix. If you multiply out, uh, I say, what is, what is at the top? Two times x plus one times y. Mm -hmm. Two x plus y. William, what is at the bottom? Um, two x minus y. Um, 2x minus 1. Uh, I obviously mean this is a 1. Yeah. So it's equal to 1, 5. So when I say this is equal to this, it basically means x plus y is equal to 1. 2x minus y is equal to 5. So it's basically the same. Wait, what is that next to the x? It is a nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is a 1. Uh, Johannes? Um, this, this, so this only works with this type of linear equation, <coughs> forgot what it's called, but like to form where, um, where like some number times x plus some number times y equals to some other number, like this type of equation, like does, you, can you use matrices, like obviously like without converting the, uh, Type of linear equation for like something it should like be. all the like linear equations should be able to. Like, can, you, like, use can you give me an example of this real number? Um, like for example, um, like uh, y equals to three x plus two. Can you use uh, and um, and what and y equals minus seven x plus one? Yeah, you just need to rearrange it to. Yeah, yeah, but, but but like it has to be in this format. Yeah. In in order to use matrices. You need to rearrange it to find okay. the matrices. Right. Okay. So uh, so the first point I try to make is basically this matrix, which looks really odd <coughs> to you, is the same as this. Uh, the second one is I'm going to show you how to solve it. So someone is going to tell you that there's this matrix which is one third, one third, two thirds, minus one third. And they ask you, okay, why don't you multiply this on both sides? Now, uh, you might not know why I do it first, but it, but you know what, what I'm doing, right? I'm just saying, okay, this, there's this equation here. 
Let's just kind of add a 2x2 two two <coughs> matrix that looks like that <coughs> on both sides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Olivia, um, so this multiplied by this, what's the top left? One. Lovely, what is top right? Zero. Isaac, what is bottom left? Zero. Daisy, what's bottom right? Um, Because this is two thirds, and because it's negative and negative, so it's uh, plus one third. Okay. So, uh, make sense? Uh, Joanna, one second. So let's do the uh, right hand side. <coughs> Joanna, what's the number at the top? If we do this multiplication. Um. Two and two plus? Two and. Uh, it's just two. Oh, okay. Wait, oh, right. what is the number at the bottom if we do this multiplication? So this one, because this is identity, after you multiply, you basically know it's x, y. So uh, using this, you basically find x is equal to 2, y is equal to <coughs> minus 1. It's minus 1. Uh, How did it become minus? Oh, never mind. It should be minus 1. Uh, oh, this yeah. one, it should be a minus 1. Jonas? So how do you get the like one third, one third, two oh, third? Uh, good question. Because well, like it, it so this is the purpose of today's class. Okay. So today we are going to say how to find this inverse. Now, um, in real life, uh, meaning in sciences, finance, engineering, usually the system of equation is more than two variables. Usually it's like a thousand equations with a thousand variables, or like two hundred variables and two hundred equations. What which method do you think the computer used to solve those equations? Matrix. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically this algebraic and graphical, it quote unquote only works when it has a very small number. But once you get to four and five, this is really well, we'll show you how to find the inverse, but this method computer is very good at. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, one of the two applications. Okay, uh, I'm not a little hesitant. Should I go through the second question, second example? Okay, let's let's do the second one. Okay, example number two. So I'm going to speed up number two a little bit fast. Uh, number two, the second application or second example application is called linear transformation. Uh, similarly, you have a point here, x and y, and then there's a point, two, three, or P. Okay. Now I'm going to do something interesting or well, funny. So that's that two to three. Instead of uh, a lot of you have seen this uh, this notation, I'm actually going to write it like a like this. 
to three. Okay. Now I'm going to give you two examples, and I'm intentionally using some fancy Greek letters. Uh, let's say p is equal to two three. I believe this is called sigma. It looks like a tilted bag. Uh, by convention, the favorite number to use is a something called lambda. Isn't that thing called omega? <laughs> no, no, omega is oh, omega, this, right? that, that's like, oh, that's, that's I thought sigma was the summation signal. Sign. That's capital. capital, this is small. Small. It looks like an A rotated 90 degree oh. anti clockwise. So, lambda is just a number, okay, for everyone. You can think of this as a 5, or as a 6, or as a 7. But somehow in this situation, the convention is lambda. So, uh, sigma times P, lambda 0. Uh, whose turn is this? Your turn. What is the number at the top? Um. It is uh, two times sigma. I'm uh, sorry, two times lambda. Um, plus, plus, uh, and then that is a three lambda. times. So you were to point this again. Uh, pretend lambda is two. Okay. Pretend lambda is two. Okay. If lambda is two, then this is basically four six. If I draw an arrow here to represent P, so after we multiply this, the new point is basically two times the distance. So this is P, and I multiply this, it becomes it, it, it basically goes here. Okay, now here I'm using a lambda as I, I'm using two substitute as lambda. But in general, it turns out what this like sig little sigma do is to uh, how to say it? Uh, extend or magnify whatever that you want to use. The arrow from origin to P. By the number times. So first of all, let me pause here. Like, uh, if you substitute lambda as two, you know what that means, right? Yeah. So after you do the multiplication, so there's a there's some there's a there's an arrow here, and then the new point is basically lambda many times longer, but it's the same direction. Jonas. Wait, you can also uh, use this to rotate up, uh, right? To rotate p. Yeah, but I'm using I'm going to use a simple simple example. So another example is, I forgot what this is called. Uh, five. This is five. One, zero, zero, minus one. Now, side P, uh, I'm going to ask Daisy. Mm. Once you multiply, what is it? Yep. Uh, the second number? Negative three. Negative three. So this point is uh, <coughs> sigma p. <coughs> Zero minus three is basically somewhere here. Oh, and this okay. is called p. So what does this what does this do? What does this reflect? Reflect by the x-axis. So what this what this kind of uh, little matrix does is kind of reflecting. Uh, well, you don't know what this symbol means, but basically it means origin drawing to p that arrow reflects it by the x-axis. Is that Now, uh, okay. Wait, the arrow is like that. Is a vector. But a lot of us don't know what a vector is. Yeah. Um, so uh, you do not yet know what it means, but just imagine uh, if you're studying, let's say, mechanical engineering, there's a graph. 
there is a mechanical arm, okay? If you want to kind of move it, or you study, let's say, planet motion, uh, matrices basically is a mathematical way of describing to you uh, what that does to the position of a, of a planet. You, oh, you can extend it into the third dimension and like you can do stuff for like, I don't know, like 3D rendering. Yeah, uh, this is actually what I was meant to say. Uh, I do too, but you can imagine if I'm better at drawing, I could basically do X, Y, Z, and then to have a point, Q, and then I basically say, well, the point Q has three coordinates, one, two, three. Okay, but I'm not going to do it because joy is not really my strength at all. Okay, so this is application. Again, today's uh, class is about how to find that, that inverse, the whatever one third, one third that I came up with. Uh, and your homework this week is also only going to be about uh, calculating uh, inverses uh, for I think four to five examples. That's it. Okay. Now, uh, the 2.2, the second one, is called, I'm going to put in parenthesis because this is optional. You can call it multiplicative or you can ignore the word, uh, just inverses. of a square matrix. Okay, so we are only going to talk about square matrix. So uh, I'm going to start with two definitions. The first definition, capital G, capital L, subscript N, is the set of uh, N by N matrices a with determinant of A not equal to zero. Okay. Uh, this is called the N by N general <coughs> linear group. Now, uh, you can copy this down, but also need to know that for our purposes, okay, we only care about 2x2 two two and 3x3. Three three. Does it make sense? So basically it can be like 4x4, 10x10, 100x100, but we are only going to talk about 2x2, two 3x3. Two, three three. Uh, now, second definition. If there's a matrix A that belong to this group, again, A is an N by N matrix where the determinant of A is not equal to zero. Is that a G or is that an L? This one? No. This, this one? I, no. The one in the, I, the first a. one. This is if. A very stylish capital I. Okay? Uh, I think we should not short call it that definition. Okay? You can call it a theorem. Okay? But basically it's a statement. Then there is a unique matrix. We call it A minus 1 such that a times a minus 1 or a is equal to a minus 1 times a is equal to i and this is called the inverse of a So let's do an example. Okay. We're gonna do two examples and then the break will be and then we'll have a break. Okay. 
the first example is going to be really simple. After we do the first example, you say, okay, uh, it is simple, you get it, which is 2 by 2. The second example is a 3 by 3, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but since you survived the homework last week, uh, so you're going to be fine. Okay? So the first example, um, A is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. And we want to find the inverse of A. This is an F daisy. Okay. A stylish A. So there are four steps. 1, 2, 3, 4. For 2 by 2 and 3 by 3, there are like four steps. Okay. So let's do the step 1. Step 1. Find determinant of A. So uh, someone talked about whether we use square parenthesis or curly parenthesis. Uh, another convention is you basically draw a straight line. Uh, you might have seen it in the homework. It, when there's a straight line, then it means it's calculating the determinant. What's the determinant of A? What will it be? Minus 2. Mm -hmm. So 10 minus 12, so it's minus 2. Now, the second step is find cofactor of A. So this is called co this is a short form for cofactor. So you have the cofactor is a two by two matrix. The way to do it is so you have the two here. If you cross out that row, cross out that column, what number is left? Five. Mm -hmm. The top right, if you also cross out that first row and second column, what number is left? Four. Four. And for the bottom left, if you cross out that column, cross out that row, what number is left? Three. What about the last one? True. True. Okay. Now here's the tricky part. After you do this, you need to add the minus sign here. So when there's a 3 by 3, it's going to be positive minus, add minus 1. Imagine uh, in a 3 by 3 example, we're going to add a minus sign alternatively. Here, 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 and the other five number are positive. Okay. The way to think about it is, uh, each of those, you need to add a minus 1 ij, where i row and j column so you basically uh, so i plus j so it's basically an alternative sign the first one, top left, is positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative here, positive, negative, positive, negative uh, now, the step number three is a lot easier. Uh, this is the only difficult step. Step three, uh, it is called something called find a joint. Of A, which is basically just the cofactor of A transpose. And what is that? If you transpose this, num this matrix, what is the Matrix, roughly. Um, five, top left is five, top right is negative three, bottom left is negative three. So step number four, then we are done. Step number four, it turns out inverse is equal to determinant of A, adjoint of A, so in this case, it basically means 5, negative 2, 3 over 2, 2, and negative 1. So it basically means divide each of these numbers by the determinant, which is negative 1. So let's kind of check. So yeah. 
negative two and a half, positive one and a half, two and negative one. And we basically want to multiply this Uh, William, what is the top left? The top left is negative 5. Mm, no, uh, multiply this. Uh, uh, why do you divide one. all of... Why do you divide all... What are the equations that you say to divide all of the... Oh, um, um, so um, in the last second half of the class, I will explain, but this is a good question. This notation basically means uh, you, put, you put the determinant of A, uh, you divide every element in the matrix by the determinant of A. Oh. But we will explain this convention in the second half. Do, uh, Rafi, did I answer your question? So basically a joint of A is basically this one and Rafi is uh, asking what does this one over determinant A of A means? It basically means divide every element here by the determinant of A, which is minus 2. Well, it's, well, like, you're really like just multiplying the matrix by 1 <coughs> over the <determinant coughs> right? So like you're multiplying every element by 1 over the determinant we, we actually have not talked about what it means. We talk about determinant multiplying something, but multiplying a number in front of matrix, we have not talked about. You, you could guess based on the convention, but we have not explicitly talked about it. Uh, so, Isaac, give you a very easy one. What is this one? Zero. Did you cheat? No, I did not. Oh, okay. So, uh, basically, this is an inverse of okay? it. <laughs> so, uh, you could basically check again. 2, 3, 4, 5, put it on the other side. It is also the identity matrix. Okay, so we are going to do an example of 3 by 3, and after that it will be half time. homework is going to be calculating inverses for some 2x2 two two and some 3x3 three three matrices. That's it? Yes, that's it. Oh, yeah. Wow. I can give you special extra bonus homework part. Okay. Uh, so example 2 is a 2x2 two two matrix. Uh, let's call it B. 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 5, 1, minus 1. And we need to find the inverse of B. What is step number 1? What is step number 1? Will you yeah, so uh, find determinant of B um, so determinant of B um, 3 multiplied by 1 multiplied by minus 1 second diagonal 2 minus 1 and 5 Third one, 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 one. And then the, the arc diagonal in the other direction with a negative. So the first one is minus one, one, five. And then minus two, one, negative one. And then finally, three minus one, one. After you do all of this, uh, 
Again, this is a simple multiplication. You basically get minus 12. William is really happy. I'm happy that William is really happy. Okay. Now, uh, step number two is the part that is hard. Okay. Uh, step number three, if you recall, is basically transpose. And then step number four, divide every single number by negative 12. Okay. Step number two, this is the hard part. Find cofactor of B. Judging from the size of the matrices, you know it's not, it's going to be something. So once you cross out this, what is left? Once you cross out the first row and first column, what is left? Um. One minus one, one minus one. Yes. Uh, how do we fit this four number into one one spot? Uh, I don't know. I'll give you an idea. Like you can. Make you basically oh. calculate the different number. <laughs> okay. Uh, Isaac, what do I do with, with with this one? The second one. The the sec. What is left? Wait, which ones do you cross out? <coughs> uh, two. What? You cross out which one? Oh, uh, cross out this one and this one. Oh. So basically the two that include the spot that we're using. So that's one negative, one negative, one, and five. One, negative one, five, and negative, negative. one. Rafi, what about top left? Top left? Oh, sorry, top right. Um, one, one, five, one. Olivia, what about this one? The second row and the first column. One, two, one, one, negative one. Mm -hmm. Johannes, what about the one in the middle? Uh, okay. uh, three, one, five, one. Who's sitting next? William, what about this one? Three, two, five, one. <coughs> two, five, one. Three, two, five, one. Yeah. Daisy. Daisy, what is this? Bottom left. Uh, So if you cross out this and cross out this, what are the four numbers that's uh, that? Two, one, one, negative one. Okay, Isaac, back to you. Okay, so it'll be three, one, one, and negative one. Rafi. <coughs> three, two, one, one. So almost done, what, what is missing? You have to calculate all the determinants. Oh, no, no, no. It's actually sim simple. I just mean you need to add the negative here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So now we need to calculate all the determinants, uh, <laughs> which is why. So uh, this is, let's say, zero. Negative one four, negative four, one minus four, negative two, negative one, negative plus three, negative three, negative five, negative eight, three minus ten, negative seven plus seven. This one, negative three, this one four, this is one. <coughs> okay, step number three, we're almost there. 
Step number three is something called file and join. Again, this one is easy, basically transpose. Zero, negative four, negative four, three, negative eight, seven, negative three, four, and one. Okay, this one is literally just re rearranging. The last steps. B negative one is one over the determinant of B times a joint of B. So you divide all of this by negative 12. Um, now, you are welcome to use the half time to check this or to play video games that this will indeed be 11100, one, one, zero, zero. basically identity.